The following program is brought to you by the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Visit us on the web. I can feel the sweet wind blowing through the valleys and the hills. I can feel the sweet wind blowing as I go, as I go. I can feel the sweet wind blowing through the valleys and the Howdy, I'm Maynard Stanley, and today on Maine Woods and Waters, we're going to be uh, going over uh, some basics on black powder. Uh, we're going to be covering some safety uh, issues, and we're also going to be uh, showing you how to uh, refine that load and get your get your best group on of your on of your black powder rifle. Anytime you're at the rifle range and you're going to be shooting. You want to make sure that you and any of the people with you have the proper safety equipment. You should always wear some form of uh, hearing protection. I have the, uh, these are called shotgun muffs here. And this is a type here that goes behind your head. And this keeps, uh, keeps this wire on your way. And then we have this other type. You can see these. Uh, this is the kind I'll be using. They just uh, you plug them in your ears, and they're easy to take back out, and so you can talk and hear what you're doing. Okay, now I'm going to be using Paradex, and I'm going to be loading from a, a charger. Now on the shooting table, I prefer not to have the bulk powder. I load my my uh, charger with a bulk powder and then I'll keep the bulk powder on a separate table. Uh, you never you never load from the charger. You always put your powder into a, uh, a measure and then with this safely out of the way you dump the powder into your rifle. That way uh, if by chance there was a spark inside your barrel uh, from just firing a shot, uh, if you only had this little bit of powder here, if that flashed, uh, it's going to scare you, but it's probably not going to hurt you. On the other hand, if, you'd, if you've got a, a, uh, a quarter of a pound of powder uh, and you're charging the gun directly onto the charger and it flashed, uh, that would be like having a bomb in your hand. So you never want to uh, actually load the gun from the charger itself. Always dump the powder into your measure. And this is going to give you the more accurate measurement anyway. Uh, these are adjustable. You, uh, and you'll see in a few minutes we're going to find out just where this measure needs to be set uh, for this rifle to give us the uh, the best accuracy. So, I when I'm shooting, I like to keep this out of the way too. I either keep it behind me in my back pocket or back on the bench. Uh, I, I make every effort not to have this exposed to uh, any sparks. Okay, now I'm going to be using bull butter. It's a uh, called Natural Lube 1000 Plus. Um, I like it. It seems to work real well for me. Some people prefer not to use it. Uh, also, eye protection. I'm going to be trying two different uh, ball sizes. I'm going to be trying a, a .570 ball. And I'm going to be trying that ball using two different patch uh, thicknesses. I'm going to try it with the 15 thousandths patch. And, well, actually, I might even use the 20 thousandths patch. And of those, I'll see which one works the best. And then I'll start varying my powder charge, uh, maybe by five grains to a time, until I get the best load. Uh, and this here, this is called a loading block. This is what they look like when they're empty. And what this is, uh, if you can see in there, those are, those are rifle balls with a patch around it. 
And to use this, after you charge your gun with powder, you just simply place this over the barrel and you drive the ball with a shot starter. You drive that ball right down into the barrel. And it makes it a lot quicker than uh, having to fish around and get a patch and get a ball and place it on the, uh, on the muzzle. And I use these for, for hunting or if uh, we're in a uh, competition where uh, time might be important or if uh, we're doing like a woods walk. I like the uh, loading block. And these can be loaded up the night before and it lets you shoot a little bit quicker, a little bit smoother the following day. Okay, well, some of the other things we have here, uh, we have calipers, uh, vernier calipers, dial calipers. Uh, these are important because we need to be sure of the dimension of the rifle ball that we're using, and we need to be able to check the thickness of the patch material. Now, the two rifle ball sizes uh, I mentioned, one was the 570, and the other rifle ball dimension we're going to try is a 575. And we'll probably try the 575 with the 10 thousandths and 15 thousandths patch, and the 570 ball with the 15 thousandths and the 20 thousandths patch. And we'll see what we get for the, for the uh, optimum accuracy. And uh, after we'd establish the exact amount of powder, we will weigh it in this powder scale and we'll make sure we know exactly what the load is. Uh, the load could change from summer to winter a little bit. Uh, so we're going to uh, we're going to make sure we're getting the, the most accuracy uh, that we can right now. So let's uh, let's do some shooting and make some noise and have some fun. Okay, let's try a shot and see where we're hitting on the paper. Okay, uh, that was our first shot that's on the paper. Uh, it looks like we're about the right height, but we're shooting, the gun is shooting a little bit to the right. Here, you want to take a look? And we'll pour that right in. Now this is the uh, the loading block. These are the five seven zero. See, I slid that ball down just a little bit so it sticks out. It sticks out through right here, and that will just locate itself right on the barrel. And we'll just hit this. The way you slide the ball down onto the barrel, or down onto the ball, you want to do that the same way every time. If you're hitting it twice, Make sure you do that every single time you load. Or if you want to just do it one time, do it one time. Uh, some people uh, pound the ball down. I don't like to do that. Uh, but always make sure that the ball is seated at least firmly down onto the powder. Uh, if the ball isn't down on the powder, that can cause a uh, very dangerous situation you could blow the barrel up on your gun. That's like having an obstruction in the barrel when you fire it. So just make sure that the ball is seated firmly on the powder. And then we're ready to go again. 
Okay, so we'll see where this goes. Right, right now, I'm not interested in in hitting the center of the black. What I'm interested in, in doing uh, is actually getting the group. I want to get a nice small group. After I get a nice small group, then I can make the side adjustments to get the center of the group into the middle of the black. So. Right now, we're not worried about where on the paper. So long as we're on the paper, we'll get go for group right now. Let's try another shot and see how this one goes. Here, you want to take a look? Okay. That shot moved into the uh, the black a little bit more. Uh, I think that first shot, uh, we had kind of what's called a delayed ignition. The, uh, the cap fired, and then there was a little delay, and then the powder fired. Uh, there's a lot of reasons that could have happened. I could have damaged the cap uh, prior to putting it on. Uh, another thing, uh, I had just previously cleaned the gun and there was uh, cleaning solvent in the barrel. Maybe the powder was a little bit damp. But for whatever reason, uh, that first shot, we're going to call that a wild shot because it, it is further out from uh, the center. And now we'll see, uh, we'll see if the rest of the shots group where the uh, second shot went. Okay, once again, this is a powder charger, this is a powder measure. We're not going to put powder directly in the barrel because we just fired the gun. And it's possible that there could be a spark in there, which we don't want to be igniting this whole canister of powder. So we'll load the charger. I'll load the uh, major. Pour that in. It's always a good idea to make sure you keep your face away from the, uh, the muzzle. I've, I have never had the had uh, a gun go off while I'm loading it, but uh, you know it's a, a good, good practice just to keep your face away from it. Once again, I'm going to push the uh, the ball through just a little bit so it sticks up, and by doing that, you, these go real smooth. You can see you can slide that in and out. So we're just going to slide it down a little bit so it will catch the barrel. Place your shot starter on in one hit, like that. That puts the ball down in the barrel. Now you want to make sure you don't want to shoot it like that. Now I'm going to go one, slide that down, make sure it's firmly on the powder. Still keeping my hands away from the muzzle and I'm keeping my face back away from the muzzle. Okay, now we're ready to shoot again. practice. So when you're shooting for score or you're working up loads, you want to eliminate as many variables as possible. 
And the way you do this is uh, try to do everything exactly the same each time. Uh, one thing that's good to do, when you're all ready to shoot, uh, depending on what you've been doing, you want to at least take a couple of good, uh, even, smooth breaths. And then on the third time, you only take in about a half a breath and you hold and you squeeze the trigger. Make sure you're on, on target. Squeeze the trigger slowly until it lets off. Uh, if by chance it, you don't have a good sight picture, take your finger off the trigger and repeat that uh, process again, which is take a breath, just breathe normal, do that a couple of times until you're relaxed, and then uh, uh, while you're doing this, you're getting in position, you're getting your sights on the target, and uh, when you're, you're nearly ready, you take about a half a breath, hold, you're not gonna, when you're breathing in and out, your body's moving, so by taking in a half a breath and then holding it, you're not really stressing your system. Uh, you've got plenty of air, and now you're going to just very carefully and slowly squeeze the shot off. And uh, and by doing that, you're going to this is going to give you a consistent uh, procedure to follow each time you shoot. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're shooting off the bench or if you're shooting offhand. Uh, whatever your position, uh, follow this same procedure. And if the sight picture isn't right and you're on a, on a time when you need to take another breath, take your finger off the trigger, keep the gun pointed in a safe direction, and kind of get your composure again. Take a few more breaths, and then when you're relaxed and you're ready, then you try, you go for it again. So, let's get this next shot off and we'll see where this goes. Okay, another thing that's important to remember when you're shooting, and that's follow-through. Uh, being consistent with follow-through is extremely important. That means that when you're shooting, when you squeeze that shot, you don't even want to be aware that the gun is going off. You want to be concentrating on keeping those sights and that sight picture the same, right through the let off. When you squeeze the gun, the gun actually fires, but you're not flinching, you're not relaxing or, or making any movement. You want to just maintain that posture, that that uh, uh, hold on the gun, hold it, or if you, whatever, pistol or bow. Uh, that follow through is very important in, uh, in eliminating variables. If you're doing some movement or you're letting your body relax as you fire, uh, the barrel of the gun is going to move. Uh, so it's very important to follow through on every shot and do every shot the exact same way. Then if we get a bad group down there, we know that it's the load, it isn't something we're doing. Uh, so let's see what we got, how we did on that shot. Okay, those three shots, I felt I did everything consistently each time, and I really don't have the type of accuracy uh, that I need. So the load we just tried is uh, a, a 15 thousandths patch with a 570 ball. And so what we're gonna do now with this 570 ball we're going to try a heavier patch. We're going to go to a 20 thousandths patch and the exact same powder charge, and we'll see what that does for our group. Uh, 
Now, I've already pre-lobed some patches to home. Works pretty good. I cut these patches on a pillow ticking and I microwave the lube until it's uh, real runny. Now these patches are a little thicker. They're going to go in a little bit harder. But I, uh, I microwave the lube until it's soft and runny, and then I pour it into the patches that I've pre-cut and put it in a bag like this, and then I just work it all through until the patches are totally saturated. Okay, let's try this. This is 20 thousandths patch. That shot is about in the in the same area as one of the other shots I took. Uh, so what we need to do now is see if we can get consistency here. So, let's see how we do on this one. Try one more. Okay, and we'll see how this one goes. Oh, 
Oh, it looks pretty good. Yeah, take a look. Okay, this was our first shot here. And I think this one here was a flyer because uh, it's very difficult to follow through uh, when, you, when your gun uh, does a hang fire. And I wasn't expecting it. Uh, so I'm going to take the blame for this being out here myself. But still, these two shots here, we've got uh, probably an inch and a quarter uh, between the two of them. And at 25 yards, that's really not, uh, that's not an acceptable group size. Uh, now, on the second one, this was the first, and second, and then the third went right in the middle between the two of them. Uh, this group is uh, this is a this is a twenty thousandths patch with a five seven zero ball. So what we're going to do now, uh, probably not on this show, but this is a much better group. So now we're going to refine this a little bit more. What I'll do is I'd shoot this same load again on a fresh target and see if I still get the same sideways spread. This could have been this could have been me. Uh, I, I prefer to shoot offhand, and bench rest shooting isn't uh, uh, always, I'm not that used to it because I don't do it a lot. So, but it is the most consistent way to, to, to work up these loads. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll shoot the same load again, and then I'll vary the load. I'll go up five grains of powder, try three shots, and then I'll try... Uh, five grains uh, more than this load and try that and that will give me three different uh, powder amounts uh, with the same ball and patch combination and of the best of those three I'll take that one and I may cut the grains uh, again and go on both sides of the best uh, group that I got that time and in that that way I can just keep refining this down and refining it down until I've got exactly uh, the best possible powder, ball, and patch combination for my rifle. And uh, well that's how we work up a load for a black powder rifle. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show and if you get a chance uh, bring your family up and, uh, and go to the your local, local rifle range uh, uh, most of them around the state do have black powder uh, groups that shoot, and uh, it's, it's a really inexpensive uh, family sport. So uh, take your family to the rifle range and uh, shoot some black powder. Uh, it's a lot of fun. The guns don't kick, and uh, you can have, a, have yourself a good time. So that's it for, uh, for this show. Thanks for watching. This is Maynard Stanley. I can feel the sweet wind blowing through the valleys and the hills. I can feel the sweet wind blowing as I go, as I go. Did you know that by the 1800s, the wild turkey had disappeared from Maine? In the 1970s, work began to reintroduce the wild turkey into suitable habitats. And today, wild turkeys are once again plentiful throughout much of the state. Brought to you by the people who manage Maine's fish and wildlife. For you, the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. Visit our website to learn more.